If you're feeling like it would be easier to just send your kids to school and you have no idea what to do or how to even decide, I've been there on Tuesday. <laughs> Hi, I'm Wendy and I am a pregnant homeschooling mom of four. And for the past month, I've been feeling that like in order for me to not feel burned out and not feel overwhelmed and to get more rest, that I just need to send my kids to school. And it wasn't until I talked to my husband and sought counsel from my friends and prayed about it and walked through these tips that I'm about to give to you that I finally came to the right decision for my family. The first step or my first step was talking to my husband and sitting down and explaining to him that I'm overwhelmed. I can't get into a routine or a flow. I'm pregnant. I'm tired. I'm this. I'm that. And just really laying out to him how I've been feeling. My husband listened to me and he reminded me that we do not make long term decisions on temporary feelings. He's a genius. <laughs> he reminded me that the first thing that we do in this family is we remember our why. And a part of our why is that homeschooling strengthens our family values. And that homeschooling shows us how we navigate through these trials and these burnouts and these different things that we may be feeling. That homeschooling pushes us all to grow that we love the flexibility of homeschooling. We are closer as a family because we homeschool. And honestly, homeschooling allows us to better do what the Bible says when it comes to training up our family in the way that they should go. Now that's just a few pieces of our why, but he reminded me of our why. So my first suggestion to you would be to talk to your spouse and then also do you have a why? Do you know why you do this? And if you don't, I challenge you to take the time to make a why, to make a list, to make a mission statement for your family as to why you homeschool. And then I went and talked to my friends. And now talking to my friend Katie, she reminded me about my own course <laughs> that I sell about creating peacefully present moments. Check it out in the description and in the pinned comments. But she reminded me that a part of my course is to identify your biggest struggle and not try to balance all the things at once, but to start with their biggest struggle, the biggest thing that you are working on or the biggest thing that is causing you the most stress. And when I did take the time to identify my biggest frustration or my biggest hurdle or the thing that the overwhelming thing, I realized that it was something very simple. So for me personally, it was this frustration that I needed to homeschool my oldest to the maximum capacity. So a lot of the times when I am in a busy, overwhelming season, what I will do is I will slow down on homeschooling and in order to get all the home maintenance things in order and to get life in order and to allow for healing. But because my son is in the sixth grade now, I, ha I feel this pressure on me to make sure that he is being schooled on a daily basis and continuous, continually being challenged. One of the things that we believe in our home is that we take homeschooling year by year. And so with him coming up to the high school years and the middle school years and all the things, I think to myself, if we were to ever decide that homeschooling is no longer for us and we wanna transition him to public school, he's gonna be behind because I took X amount of months off because I wasn't feeling good or because we just moved, you know? And so that constant pressure was on my was on the back of my mind in addition to everything else. And so what Katie reminded me once that was identified, she's like, okay, so that's what it seems like you're telling me. And so if that's the situation, then make sure that Sean is done. Make sure that Sean's schoolwork is done. So once Sean is done, your goal for the day is accomplished. You don't gotta worry about everybody else. <laughs> like if everybody else happens, great. But your focus and your goal is making sure Sure that Sean's school gets done. And so once his school is done, then you know you're good. You don't have to stress about all the other things. You can move on to something else. And so that allowed for me to be able to take a deep breath and be like, all right, 
So as long as I could do Sean, Sean is Sean's not that overwhelmed. That's one person I could do that. And so I, of course, everybody got a little bit of something and everybody has been being homeschooled, but just being able to really focus on just making sure that if at the end of the day, he's the only one that was schooled, then I accomplished my goal for the day. That allowed me the ability to be able to take a deep breath. And that's why I teach it in my course. That's why I teach it in my course. <laughs> this should have been number one, but just to be real, this is my, this has been my process and it wasn't number one. Um, but to take it to God in prayer, <laughs> our prayer should always be number one, but I waited to like the third or fourth step, but take it to God in prayer. Like I had to be like, dude, I need to lay all this at his feet, at his feet. Like where I am weak, he is strong. He can show me things that I cannot, that I have not seen. He can give me peace that surpasses all understanding. I need to take this to him. And so just being very, and not just like, Lord help me. I was doing those too, but not only those types of prayers, like deep intentional prayer, prayer that's attached to habits. So like for me, it was every time I would go use the restroom, which is a lot when you're pregnant. It's a whole lot. But every time I go use the bathroom, I would pray and I would ask God to help me deal with my overwhelm and my burnout and my tiredness and this and that and the other and to guide me and to show me and to do all the things. But being intentional about that prayer and making sure that it was actually happening really helped me to make a decision as to whether or not I was going to send these kids back to school. And what God revealed to me personally through that intentional prayer time was how close my children were getting, how much they bonded and were to get from being together all the time, how wise they were and not lacking, how intelligent they were, how they had no desire to go to school, which, which is a shock because I've always had one child that has always wanted to go to public school. And um, that child has no desire to go to public school right now. And how like, when you think about it, where is the time for real? Because I would have to drive them, drop them off at three or four different types of schools at this point and i gotta go to a middle school i gotta go to elementary school i gotta go to a preschool so at least three different types of schools and by the time i got back home try to deal with all this it's time for me to go back and pick them back up and do all these things and it's like and then we're doing life all separate and they're not and and all of our whys are no longer relevant and all these things but all that to say that god revealed to me that that was not and my husband as well obviously but god revealed to us that that was not what was best for our family right now. I challenge you guys, if you do have that feeling to like wanna send your school kids to school, is to evaluate year by year. Not second by second, not feeling by feeling, not moment by moment, not trial by trial, but year by year. I am not one of those homeschool mamas that say that public school is not for you. Don't ever send your kids to public school. Don't do that. That's completely wrong. Da, da, da. I'm just not. I do think that for some people that is the best route for them and for their family. And I am not God. And so I, I feel like I have no right to tell you um, what you feel God is telling you to do. But I do challenge you to evaluate over a long period of time and not necessarily over a feeling or over a hard month or over a hard week. Um, yeah. So now that you know how I came to the conclusion that it would not be easier for us to send our kids back to school, maybe you're wondering how you can find that dedicated time to get into your prayer and get into um, meditating on God's word. So check out this video where I discuss with you about how I wake up before the kids, even when it's cold outside. Now that has been a huge struggle. I'll see you guys over there. <laughs> Bye.